What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking, y'all? Just want to say if you're interested in more reaction videos, Larry Bird or other players, go check out the reaction video playlist. And the Larry Bird reaction videos are also in the Larry Bird playlist as well. Big shout out to subscriber slash viewer I'm Weak for Deaky, who has suggested several topics for content as far as Larry Bird reactions go. And this was one of the ones that were provided to me to check out. So I appreciate you. And we are here today to react to it. Larry Bird, from what everybody tells me and from things I've heard, is that Larry Bird is one tough son of a bitch. One tough son of a gun. I'm a Kobe fan through and through. And if you've been on this channel, you know that I say it. It's in the topic of the video. But Kobe Bryant, I wasn't around to watch Bird Live, so everything I've seen is through research, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But during my time watching basketball, mid '90s to now, Kobe Bryant was probably the toughest mofo I've ever seen play basketball. Kobe would play through all kinds of injuries, injuries that players would miss weeks would miss months for to undergo surgery Kobe rarely opted for surgery and just decided for treatment and playing through pain he played with back spasms in the 08 playoffs he played with a torn ligament in his shooting hand in the 08 playoffs he played through uh, a severe sprained ankle in the 2000 finals Kobe played in the 22 playoffs with a broken index finger just taped it up and went through treatment and played through it ended up winning a championship and then we all know about even the Achilles Terry Torres Achilles walked back out on the court iced two huge free throws to help the Lakers win the game as he willed them into the playoffs Kobe was a tough son of a bitch toughest guy I seen I mean people don't take that in consideration like he was able to shoot 45 to 50 percent from the field with like mangled fingers on his shooting hand. Like, I'm like, dude, dude is wild. Anyway, let's see how tough this boy Larry Bird really is. And I know Larry played through the double Achilles injury. He came back from the surgery and lit the league up after a double Achilles injury. So I want to see the other stuff Larry played through. So let's check this video out. I know he had back, back problems too. Through it and goes out there and plays, but he is not a healthy person right now. <laughs> I've never met an athlete that would play with pain the way he does, and the, an athlete that's so highly self motivated as Larry Bird. The great Red Arbaugh. I think four or five years you'll think back about what he did, or you'll just, you know, you'll go that. I think it's one of those things that as the years go by, it'll become bigger and bigger and bigger. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm back with another video, but this time once again, we have to talk about Larry Legend, one of my favorite players of all time. And I think even the most casual NBA fan knows that Larry Bird in his career was a very tough player, and he overcame tremendous adversity as well as injuries. Mm. And I wanted to make a very quick video explaining how tough Larry Bird was, and just some of the big time injuries he overcame. So with that being said, let's get into the video and look at five times Larry Bird overcame injuries and absolutely dominated. So the first injury we're going to look at is from 1979 before Larry Bird was even in the NBA. And this injury occurred in a friendly softball game with Larry Bird's brother as well as friends. And here's Jackie McMullen explain this very bizarre and peculiar injury. Well he shows up and who's on the other team but his brother. So Larry's playing out in the outfield and his brother hits this kind of spinning looping ball almost like a Tim Wakefield knuckleball it's just spinning all over the place and Larry tries to go down and make a basket catch and his finger goes all the way back and he's like man wow it really hurts and he looked down and his finger was completely dislocated and mangled and you know he it really was bothering him. he had to stop playing right away and so now remember he's been drafted by the Celtics during this point but he has not mm. signed a contract yet mm. so 
he's his his finger is in a bad way. He has to have major surgery with clips put in and pins and everything mm. else. And he, he never tells the Celtics this has happened. But you know, sooner or later they get word and they summon him to Boston, and um, and the trainer examines him and says, and the team doctor examines him and they say to Red Auerbach, this guy's damaged goods. Now, Red's like, really? So he says, come on, Larry, get dressed. So Larry puts on his stuff. Red throws him the ball. He goes out. He starts shooting from all over the floor. He's hitting from everywhere. Throws him a few bounce passes. Has him throws a few overhead passes. And he said, you look fine to me, kid. And Bird said, great. But Bird to this day will tell you, he's never had the same feel for the basketball. So obviously a pretty bad finger injury that affected Bird for the rest of his life. And around 2010, Larry Bird gave an interview and said his finger to this day is shaped like a boomerang at a 45 degree <laughs> angle pointing toward his thumb. And he's had two surgeries that have failed to straighten it out. Oh shit. But I think the most intriguing thing in that clip is that Larry Bird himself said he never had the same feel for the basketball after this injury. And Bird for his career already was one of the best shooters of all time. He was the first player ever to win the 50-40-90 club yes. and he routinely shot over 90% from the line. But with that being said, Bird actually could have been a better shooter than he was in the NBA That's crazy. if it wasn't for that devastating finger injury. Now, next up on the Bird injury list. Pause. Let's talk about that one real quick. Bro, I didn't know that. See, there's a lot of stuff. That's why I always ask people in the comment section, uh, you know, if you, if you know any stories, if you were around during this time, and you can add more insight and context to these players, please let me know. I am... I am like ecstatic to have the opportunity to learn from you guys, as well as me, you know, providing information from time to time. But uh, that's crazy as hell, cause this we all know Bird to be a sharp shooter, right? Marksman. That's what I said. Laser sight, Larry, bang, three point, off one leg, whatever. But he was doing this with a surgeries could not fix this finger, failed surgeries, and he's soldiering on. Salute to Larry Legend. Let's check out the next one. This, we go to his back, one of the worst injuries yes. a player could ever have. And his injury for Bird occurred in 1985 in the middle of his prime. And here's his doctor, as well as a few commentators, talking about how tough Bird was and how difficult it was for him to even play a basketball game. Larry had two jobs his last seven years of playing. It was playing basketball, and then it was him being committed to taking care of his back. He had first heard it in 1985, building the driveway at his mom's house back in French Lick. Larry decides to do it himself. This is Larry Bird, the superstar out there, breaking his back, literally shoveling gravel. And that, that was the beginning of a process. I would see him on TV laying down, and, and then they told me that he had to lay down on planes, different things like that, and I was like, wow. As magic soared through the prime of his career, Bird was breaking down. Mm. His deteriorating back and punishing style of play proving an excruciating mix. From 88 to 92, it was painful to watch. It was painful to cover. Larry is quite ornery when he's not feeling well, which means he was ornery for those next four years. He could manage the pain in a way that very few people can do. If you get paid to go to work, you got to go to work. It was a situation that he was seeing almost daily. He had lost the structural stability in his spine, so it would slip into abnormal positions to try and lock itself to get Ooh. artificial stability. That's like getting your finger stuck in a door and somebody's still pushing on the door. So what we had to do was unlock his spine, realign it, do techniques that would hold that for four hours, six hours, that type of thing, and then he'd go play basketball. Wow. So obviously that back injury was pretty devastating for Bird, and it kind of marked the end of his prime. But even with that being said, Bird in his last seven seasons still put up tremendous stats, averaging 25.1 points per game, 9.3 boards, 7.0 assists on near 50-40-90 splits. Those stats right there from an offensive perspective are still some of the best stats of all time. And once again, show Bird could handle pain like few athletes ever. And one of the most remarkable things I've ever heard comes from Larry Bird's former teammate, that being Robert Parrish. According to Parrish, Larry Bird never took painkillers, pills, or any shots in his entire mm. career. Bird simply toughed it out and showed mental toughness as mm. well as physical toughness and played mm. basketball at the highest level for seven more years. Mm. 
Now also one thing Larry Bird was known for in his career was being mentally tough. And here's a quick story from Kevin McHale talking about Larry Bird's mental toughness after being stuck down in an airport for 10 straight hours. Back then when we flew commercial, we didn't fly private, um, we played in a Tuesday night game in Cleveland. And of course we got up for the first flight out, we had a game on Wednesday night in New Jersey. <clears throat> Snowstorm hits Cleveland, we're at the airport at 7 in the morning, flight's canceled at 7, it's canceled at 8, it's canceled at 9, it's canceled at 10, canceled at 11, 12. We finally leave about 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon, we fly up to New Jersey. Now the storm has kind of moved into Jersey. And the bus driver says, well I can't get to the, air I can't get to the hotel into the arena. I can only go to one place. Well, we had a game that night. We go to the arena. So we get to the arena, and I mean, we're dragging. And we're sitting on the locker room, and, you know, and everybody's kind of, you know, we're tired. And, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the coach gives a little bit of a speech of, come on, man, guys, we're playing basketball. Let's get ready to go. And Larry stands up, and Larry says, a couple other few, few choice words, <laughs> and he says, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take it out on their rear ends. Mm. So I was like, oh, all right, so let's go. So we go on the floor. <laughs> Elbert King sitting there. And Larry walks up to Elbert King and goes, don't take this butt whooping personally. <laughs> I've been eating hot dogs all day. And then Elbert King looks at him like, you've been eating hot dogs all day. What's that got to do with me? <laughs> and we went out and just hammered him. I mean, we, we, we terrorized him. And that was Larry. There was no excuses. I mean, he just played. And I tell you, that was just his competitive nature. But a day when you fly all day and eat hot dogs in the airport. Best thing was Elbert's look on his face like, what hot dogs got to do with me? <laughs> and that story from Kevin McHale for the most part is pretty comical, but I think it still shows Larry Bird had extreme mental toughness. Oh. And when it came to playing basketball, he would give it his best every single night. And I actually went back to Larry Bird's game charts and I found this game from 1986 on April 13th. In this game, Boston beat New Jersey by 28 points. Larry Bird had 26, four and three on 64% shooting, and he didn't miss a single three-pointer or a single free throw. And what makes it even more impressive to me is this game versus New Jersey was the last game of the season. Bird could have easily packed it in and waited sure. for the playoffs, sure. but still, he wanted to play this game for his teammates as well as his coaches. And that mm. year in 86, Larry Bird didn't miss a single game playing all 82. And if you compare that mindset from Bird to the modern day players, it's simply night and day. Sure. I pretty much guarantee you any modern day superstar will 100% sit out that game mm -hmm. and rest for the playoffs, mm -hmm. but not Larry Bird. And when talking about Larry Bird in his prime 1980 to 86, really before his big time injuries, he played 561 out of 574 games. He played all 82 games three times and over 36 minutes per game every single year. In two years, he actually led the NBA in minutes per game. So back in the day, Larry Bird, if he could walk, he was 100% suiting up and playing basketball. But the one time in Bird's career where he simply could not play was in 1989. This year, Larry Bird had severe bone spurs, he had what many people thought was a broken foot, and he had double Achilles surgery. And back in the day, an Achilles injury could possibly be the end of your career. But once again, not for Larry Bird. As the following year, he had a very great and underrated season averaging 24.3 points per game, 9.5 boards, 7.5 assists, while playing 75 games at 39.3 minutes per game, while leading the NBA in free throw percentage. So even after all those injuries, Larry Bird once again came back to all-star form, and he overcame double Achilles surgery. Now the last Bird injury we have is in 1991, and this injury is also the last great Larry Bird moment in the 91 playoffs versus the Indiana Pacers. And to kind of set the stage in this series, Boston, they were heavily favored. But in games one through four, Bird was not playing up to par, only averaging 18 points per game, nine assists, eight boards, on 37% shooting, and 11% from three. That's crazy. And back that, in the day, most in the people first would round, take that. It was a best of five series. So game five mm -hmm. was a winner take all game. In their halftime of this game, Larry Bird would go down with a severe head injury, possibly a broken cheekbone, possibly a mild concussion. Right here, the flight. But he stays down for a long time. What effort by Larry And Larry Bird is headed directly to the locker room for treatment. Nobody carrying him. In fashion, he would tough it out and come back in the middle of the third quarter. And here comes Larry Bird. But certainly this. Of what a 
Memphis lead in game five of the championship series involving the Knicks and the Lakers in 69-70. And in this game five in the Boston Garden, from that moment on, Larry Bird would dominate the remaining 18 minutes of that game, having 17 points, seven boards and five assists, on 60% shooting, leading Boston to a three point win. And that game five versus Indy was the last great Larry Bird moment as he overcame injury and dominated in that second half. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Let me know your guys' thoughts. How tough do you think Larry Bird was? Is the greatest trash talker of all time? And where do you rank him on your all-time list? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Boy, that last, that last injury there. My God. My God. So there's a couple points I just wanted to talk about real quick that was mentioned in the video. Uh, Larry, first of all, Larry Bird is, in fact, not that I doubted him, but I wanted to see what other things he did that I didn't know about that happened. But he's a tough son of a bitch, man. Shout out to Larry Legend. I like what he said, which is totally, um, when he said, hey, I get paid to go to work, so I'm going to come in and play. These players today are the complete opposite of that. These players today, and I don't really want to make this about these players today so much. Um, but it's just, it, it's day and night. Kobe had the same mentality as Bird. Kobe would always say that. He's like, I get paid. This is my job. People pay good money to come in and see me play. If I'm available, I'm going to play. Not only that, I love the game. I want to play. Um, but these players today sit out so much. They're not even injured half the time. They're just load managing. Rest. They're so tired. Yet they have... Every advancement in the book that Bird and all these other players didn't have back in the day. They have better medicine. They have better resources. They have better health teams, fitness teams, better management. They have better facilities. They have better nutrition. They have better travel. These players today are beyond pampered. And they still out here complaining that they need rest and time off and can't do back to backs, etc. This is why this is I'm I miss the old days, man. I miss the old days. I don't, I don't mean to be that that old guy, you know. But listen, man, these players today they, they just too soft and they ain't built like Larry. They ain't built like Larry. They ain't built like Mike. They ain't built like the players of the past. Kobe Bryant was really the last dog like that level of dog. You know, I say KD, uh, Kevin, uh, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, when those three retired, that was like the last of their era. We won't see people with that mentality. But Kobe's mentality was even on more of a level than KG's and Duncan's as far as I'm playing no matter what. And, like, Kobe was the last one with that wired like that, like Bird and Mike was. Shout out to Larry Bird, man. That that and and then like the back the back injuries are no joke, especially if you have a history and you you keep having back back problems. Tracy McGrady was back spasms and back injuries derailed Tracy McGrady's career. In fact, when Tracy McGrady came into the league, they didn't expect him. the The word was, "We don't think this guy lasts more than four or five years, given his back problems." On behold. T Mac actually end up exceeding that and played much more, much longer than that at a high level before the back spasms and back problems eventually took T Mac out. So the fact that Larry, I don't know, you know, how severe Larry was compared to T Mac's, but still back spasms, back problems ain't no joke, especially when you play in basketball. And Larry toughed that out for a very, 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 very long time, the better half of a decade. So so kudos to him out there laying on the court, doing the best he can. Talk about realigning the back for four hours, going out playing. Bro, you kidding me? So that's tough, man. You got to have a, a high pain tolerance threshold to be able to do stuff like that, like these kind of players do. Another thing I want to talk about was that last, that last injury where he just face planted on the fucking court. Just Bam! Face planted. It looked like someone just took a flat pancake 
and just dropped it from two stories on the hard court. Just planted. They say he probably had all kinds of stuff going on. What they say? Chin broken, chin broken, cheek, neck, concussion, all kinds of stuff. He came right back out. Bald. Bald on him. What did he drop? 17 for the rest of uh after he came back? He gave him another 17 points or something like that? Come on, Larry Legend. Come on. And that's and that's and that's older Larry Bird, too. That's older Larry Bird did that. Not to mention all the physical torment his bodies took over his career up until that point come on man kidding me paul pierce i see now now that i've seen that video footage of paul pierce going out uh, of larry bird going out with that injury it's like that guy's definitely not coming back storms out the locker room in a celtics jersey i see what you did i see where you, where you got that from paul pierce i see where you got that from you took that right out of larry legend's book and i did not know that till now Back in the 2008 finals. I see what you did there, Paul Pierce. I see it. This was a great video. Uh, I'm happy I got to see this and hear commentary from players and and learn about some more experiences that Bird had. It's absolutely phenomenal. Again, shout out to I'm Weak for Deaky for this recommendation. Appreciate you, fam. This was a good one. And y'all let me know what you think about it. If you have any recommendations or can you add more context to Larry Bird's career, especially as it pertains to him being a tough son of a bitch and his injuries, drop them in the comment section. I would love to hear what you can bestow upon me and the others. All right. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I will catch you on the next one. We out, baby.